body to the launch rally of the trade unionist and socialist coalition. <laughs> We're here tonight, six weeks before the general election, one day after the budget, to launch a new election challenge. Whatever the mix of uh, MPs and the big parties that we get after the next general election, there's going to be an overlapping agenda which seeks to make ordinary working class people and their families pay the price of the billions of pounds that's been borrowed to save the bankers, their bonuses and their casino economic system. So tonight is the start. Tonight should be remembered for centuries to come. Because it's a time when we've decided that we're going to join together, we're going to have a party for the people, by the people, that's going to support working men and women and not abandon them to the scrappy in favour of bankers, big businessmen and big business more generally. This is a time when socialism becomes real and it should become real from tonight onwards. Workers are hampered by vicious anti-trade union laws in this country, which stops them protecting their jobs, it stops them protecting the conditions of service, it stops them protecting health and safety. There's a widening gap between the rich and the rest within society, which people are getting more and more fed up with. The top 10% in Britain today own 44% of the wealth. The bottom 10% not only don't owe any wealth, they're 500 million pounds in negative equity because of debt and of what they owe on mortgages and their uh, homes. We have to argue the case, number one, about these trade union laws. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm not a friend, and I suppose anyone here is a friend of Winston Churchill. But I've got to say, thank God he never adopted the same kind of laws. I mean, imagine him ringing out Adolf Hitler and old Jews United to hell. In seven days' time, by the way, we've got some Spitfires coming your way. <laughs> On the railways, we're in the front line of defending railway safety against vicious network rail job cuts at the moment. I'm here to tell you about a threat to public safety on London Underground. Uh, London Underground, despite the Mayor's absolute promise, and I've got a picture of it here, yeah. signing, signing a petition against station closures and ticket office closures and the reduction of ticket office hours. Of course, he's got any power now, and he's broken every one of those pledges. There's a real risk that, as partly as a protest, but partly for other uh, reasons, parties of the far right could gain out of disillusionment and demoralisation with mainstream politics in this, uh, this country. So we think trade unionists and socialists, in whatever way we can, should be organising uh, together to make sure that the, uh, uh, the, the, the arguments of the far right are answered, that racist uh, policies are uh, uh, countered, and that the disillusionment that working people have is channeled in a positive direction, and that's building a new independent <coughs> political voice for working poor people. The reason why the BNP are doing so well is because not only are they fed up with this way of government, but we're in the middle of an economic crisis. The BNP can only survive when there's social deprivation, when there's lack of houses, lack of jobs, lack of hospital beds, and people feel they've got no hope out there. So the way to defeat the BNP is to get those million builders off the dole and start building houses for people to live in. What we're really seeing now is a, a, a force coming together uh, which is going to be a political force and an industrial force. I've already heard from some people who have said to me, oh, well, we've got to be careful because we don't want to be accused that we're the ones that let the Tories in. I'll tell you who's let the Tories in. New Labour has let the Tories in. And I think that what we need to do is ensure that we have a political voice that's going to ensure that working people have an alternative and a real alternative to the Conservatives who brought in these vicious Tory anti-union laws, new Labour that's maintained them, and the Liberal Democrats that won't repeal them. That's why I believe that the Trade Union and Socialist Coalition is the best way forward to go in the general election. There's one thing you can say about the UK unions, it remains the largest voluntary democratic organisation. It has shown, after nearly 250 years of struggle, its resilience. And those BA cabin crew workers fighting an attempt by a ruthless boss to drive down conditions, uh, to, to enable BA to compete with the low budget airlines like Ryanair, they deserve and need our public support. Two independent political voice 
for working poor people, which argues against uh, the involvement of Britain in overseas wars, argues against uh, privatisation, argues for public ownership of the essential uh, industries of, 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 of gas, water, electric, of rail, uh, and other uh, transport, of uh, bringing back into uh, public ownership the full uh, area of health and education, all the things that both big parties have taken away from us in the last 20 or 30 uh, years, uh, and whatever limited way we can uh, do that initially, we still think it's important to put a marker down in this uh, election, give people a chance to vote really for what they believe in, rather than just having to uh, vote against what they think uh, is not good for them and their uh, families. So uh, we've formed this coalition, we've started to bring together uh, active socialists, we're bringing together uh, members of, of some of the most fighting trade unions in the country, the, uh, the RMT, and individual members of other trade unions as, uh, as, as well. We're hoping to stand in perhaps 40 or 50 constituencies. We've targeted some of the cabinet members that have uh, been responsible for some of the worst actions of this Labour government over the past uh, uh, 13 uh, years. And we're appealing to people, not just to vote for us on the day, but to join us in the task of building a new independent political voice based uh, and, and, and rooted uh, strongly in the organisations and communities of working class uh, people.